I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 130, F1 World Grand Prix. Released in 1998, this game was developed and published by Video System. Aw oh man, isn't that the dev who made that first Mahjong game we played? Well, this is a significantly different genre, so maybe it's more fun. I personally can't say I'm a fan of F1 in any capacity, but I do understand how popular it is around the world. Looking around online, it seems this game actually had quite a few fans back in the day. I feel like I've gotten a lot better at racing games over the course of this challenge, but man, these ones that go for realism really trip me up. Hopefully I remember how to follow those racing lines. Let's get into it. The main single player mode in this game is the Grand Prix, so that's what we'll be doing to beat this game. I first had to pick who to drive as. The game has all the real F1 racers from the time period. There's Michael Schumacher, Eddie Irvine, Gene Alesi, Gerard Berger, Mika Hakkinen, David Coulthard, Rolf Schumacher, Giancarlo Fisichella, Olivier Paynes, Shinji Nakano, Johnny Herbert, Nicola Larini, Jos Verstappen, Mika Salo, Ukio Katayama, Jarno Trulli, Rubens Barrichello, Jan Magnussen, Damon Hill, Pedro Diniz, Heinz Harald Fernsen, and Driver Williams. What the heck? That Driver Williams guy must be like the Michael Jordan of F1. Didn't want them using his likeness. I went with Michael Schumacher because I was told he was awesome. I was very happy to see the difficulty set to rookie by default. I can imagine learning these tracks on higher difficulties could take ages. There were settings for acceleration and brake assist. I ended up turning those off later because they were quite annoying to deal with. Then it was time for my first race in Australia. They hold it in Melbourne. It shows an overview of the track along with a menu. There's Friday and Saturday practice as well as a warm up before the real race. I think that's what they do in real life so they threw this in for realism. The only things I cared about were the qualifier and the race itself. When you select something, it takes you to a menu to customize the settings for your vehicle. And uh, man, there's a lot of stuff here. This is by far the part I like the least about these racing sim games. I just don't have the background knowledge for what all this stuff does and I feel like I've got to take a university course to fully understand it. Thankfully it does show some stats for your car as you change things so you can get an idea of what everything does. In general, having less fuel makes you go faster and you want to make sure you have the right tires on for whether it's raining or not. The other stuff I just played around with based on the layout of the track. If it had more turns, I went for more acceleration and if not, more top speed. Finally, I was out there on the road to qualify. You get 12 attempts at the fastest lap possible, and your starting position in the race is determined by how well you do here. I was seriously struggling because of this auto braking. I think it's there to make the game easier, but it just made it harder for me. I was never able to anticipate how much it would slow me down, so I was never ready for it to start or stop again. I got fed up and went to turn those driving assists off. Ah, that's better. Still using automatic transmission though. It took me a few tries, but I finally had a decent lap on my fourth attempt. On some of the sharper turns, I'd run off the track a bit, but that's okay. In a real F1 race, I'd probably be getting penalized for that, but this game had penalties turned off by default. Then it was time for the race itself. This is a 58 lap gauntlet around this approximately two minute track. Now, if you think I'm doing all that, you must be crazy. I left it on the default settings that changed this to a 4 lap race instead. That is monumentally more manageable. I got ahead quite quickly and it wasn't too hard to maintain my first place standing. As long as I slowed down a decent amount per turn, I would avoid spinning out. The Melbourne course is a mixed bag of turns and straightaways. When all was said and done, I finished the race in first place by 2 seconds. It shows a close up of the driver holding their respective country's flag as a celebration. After that, it's time to prepare for the next one. There are 17 races in total, so this might take a bit. The second race is in Interlagos, Brazil. Quite a distance to travel to get to this one. Brazil is mostly straight sections with one exception. Towards the middle of the track is a cramped area with a bunch of back-to-back, -back, more than 90 degree turns. I found it really hard to even do this part decently. 
I probably just need to slow down way more, but I don't have discipline. I did make a very poor decision in this race. I figured I crushed it last time, so I just skipped that qualifying nonsense this time around. Yeah, that didn't work at all. With the way this game works, the racers kind of get grouped up with each other. So if you start too far back, you'll never be able to use drafting to catch up. It's nearly impossible to gain ground that way, and it led to me having a 15th place finish. Next is Buenos Aires, Argentina. This track was retired from the circuit in 1998, so this is like a time capsule in a way. It's got a nice mix of straights, fast turns, and some real tight sections. The longest straightaway is known as Avenida del Libertador, and it's the best place to overtake. I had quite the big brain strat here as well. In one of the tighter sections, there's a hairpin turn where you need to slow down way too much to navigate it. Instead, I just skipped it and drove through the grass. It's nice they have shortcuts like this in the races. In the end, I finished this one in second place. Not bad. The fourth race is in Imola San Marino. It appears this race was retired after 2006. I kept having a problem where I'd have horrible starts, which further exacerbated the need to qualify in a high position. I think I just needed to be patient and not accelerate till the signal was given. With a mix of straights and turns, this was your standard course. It had one thing in particular that made it the easiest one so far though. There was a part where you're supposed to slow down drastically to go around a big patch of grass. Instead, I just cut through the grass. Like, why doesn't everyone do this? It saves so much time. I obliterated the competition, taking first by over three seconds. Now we're on to Monaco. This is the king track. It's basically the Super Bowl of F1 racing. All the racers and the fans love it. With the race taking place down the streets of Monte Carlo, there's barely any room to overtake. Gonna have to drive a bit aggressively here. Uh, I didn't take it slow enough on my second lap and yeah, that's not gonna cut it. I ended up in 11th place and that's when I found something amazing. When you end a race, there's a lovely little button that says retry week. Things don't go your way? You can just have another go at it. It's fine. However, it ended up going poorly for me. I crashed once again and I decided to rage quit this time, taking a disqualification in this one. Basically, you're scored on a point system depending how you do in each race, so as long as I have the most points at the end of the season, it's all good. Now it's on to Barcelona, Spain. This track is quite the test of skill for drivers. The main overtaking locations are the main straight known as the Camel Straight and the first corner called La Caixa. I like the weird blue thing at the start of the lap too. Nice aesthetics from the track designers. I found a shortcut here too towards the end. There's a huge turn that started sharp and then smoothed out a bit more. So I just drove over the grass to skip the sharp part. It made it a lot easier and faster. An easy first place finish for the GOAT Schumacher. Next in the F1 circuit is Montreal, Canada. This track has got some seriously long straightaways. I especially like the generic sign saying Casino. Towards the end is a placement of a chicane known as the Wall of Champions. It's tough for many drivers, but not Michael Schumacher. I just had him skip right on over it. It just makes so much more sense to skip through the grass instead of slowing down, you know? Speaking of making sense, how about these graphics? This is some of the best visuals I've seen on the N64, as far as the game trying to look realistic goes. It's also nice hearing this Irish dude coaching me. Mostly, he just tells me I'm awesome when I win or do well on a lap. Set a new lap record. So now the next race is located in Magnicor, France. This one offers all kinds of different turns, which really tests your skill at knowing how to slow just the right amount on each one. Towards the end was a series of back-to-back -back hairpin turns. It was so hard, but I luckily found a shortcut where I just cut over the dirt to skip all that. Probably a bit rough on the tires, but these dudes are all loaded rich anyway, right? Yet another easy first place finish for the legend Michael Schumacher. Next is the Silverstone Circuit in England. Being one of the oldest tracks in the circuit, this has been the site of many historic races over the years. Especially the action at the Hangar Straight leading into the Stowe Corner. I was really struggling to qualify well on this, but I did find a good shortcut in the actual race. It's even marked off with a dirt road to make it easier to identify. I don't know why these other guys aren't using it, but I'm gonna take advantage. With that shortcut, I climbed all the way from last to first. Typical Schumacher win. After that, it's on to Hockenheimering, Germany. 
This course was completely redesigned in 2002, so the track layout in this game wouldn't match what you see today. Probably a lot of these have been changed since this game came out. There's plenty of straights for high speed overtaking, including the Parabolica. This one is a lot of fun to drive. Barely any turns, so you're just zooming the entire time. Plus these chicanes that you can completely skip over to gain a lot of ground on the other racers. This one wasn't even close. Schumacher is just too good. After that, it's on to the Hunger Roaring in Hungary. This track has a mix of all different types of turns with a massive straight where laps begin. I found a pretty decent shortcut on one of the early turns, giving me an edge on the competitors. I had done so well in the league by this point that I didn't really need to do qualifiers anymore. I'd probably climb up enough to have enough points to just finish the league in first. I took 9th place in this one. That's pretty good, considering I started in last. Now it's on to the Spa Franker Champs in Belgium. There was an insane traffic jam at the start of this one. Nothing a little push and shove can't solve. This track features famous sections like the El Roge and the Ray Dillon, which offers a steep change in elevation. The highlight of this track is the place to split off into Pit Road. If you opt not to go, you're supposed to slow down a ton to take a few tight turns around it. Boring. Instead, I just blasted my way through the grass, making it easy to pass those idiots going so slow. One of Schumacher's greatest performances, but also his easiest win. Another first place finish. Now it's on to Monza, Italy. This track is also one of the oldest in the circuit, and it's got plenty of straights to make it a fast, great time. I was trying to take a shortcut when this other driver totally cut me off and rammed me into the wall. Well, shortcut time. Whoa! Dude, what? That has got to be a penalty or something, right? There's no way he's allowed to do that. Anyway, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by that guy. This track has some famous sections like the Variante della Rogia Ascari Chicane and of course the legendary Parabolica. You can definitely hit your highest speeds here with tons of strays to achieve them. I took second place here, an impressive recovery after that earlier sabotage. Here's a controversial track, the A1 Ring in Austria. If you see this track today, it would be called the Red Bull Ring. It still has the same old famous sections like the Remus Curve, the Tight Rind Corner, and the Sweeping Red Bull Mobile Corner. Or maybe the A1 Mobile Corner? I don't know. These sections don't seem that tough to me. Just drive up the hill to skip it all, like, come on. Michael Schumacher took 7th place here, a decent showing. Now it's on the Nürburgring in Luxembourg. Although, searching online it says this place is actually in Germany. I don't know why the game says Luxembourg. I'm getting a lot of conflicting information looking this one up actually. It seems there's two different tracks called the Nürburgring, so I don't actually know which one this is. It's real weird. What I do know is, Michael Schumacher took 9th place here. Not great, not terrible. Now it's the penultimate race of the circuit in Suzuka City, Japan. I found a pretty solid shortcut to skip over one of the massive turns, but I had to be careful to not slam into the wall. That's just slower than going the normal way. I took 6th place here, and now I had to make sure I won this next race. I think I overdid it a bit in the slacking department. The final race is located in Jerez in Spain. Although the game just said it was in Europe for some reason, I made sure to qualify here because I couldn't take any chances. This was the most standard course of the game I felt. Mostly longer straightaways and the turns were angled such that you could still take them at a high speed. No shortcuts needed here. Michael Schumacher took first place and that gave him first place in the entire F1 circuit as well. It shows a cutscene with the top three finishers on a very oversized podium. I don't know how they got their cars up there. It congratulated me on winning and says I should try the professional mood. Eh, maybe next time. After that, the credits rolled and I had beaten the game. There were a couple cheat codes worth checking out. By changing driver Williams' name to driver Pyrite, he turns into the gold driver, part of the extreme team. As you might expect, his car is made entirely out of gold. This car is absolutely nuts. It goes so fast, like it can hit well over 400 kilometers per hour. And the turning is nuts. It's so hard to drive, but like you're going so fast that it just doesn't matter how well you do. Another cool one is if you change his name to Driver Vacation, you unlock a secret track located in Hawaii. I'm pretty sure this isn't a real F1 track, you know, considering we're driving through an active volcano. 
Man, if all the courses were wild like this, I'd probably like this game a lot more. This is the most fun course to drive on by far. Finally, one more thing to note, there is a challenge mode, which some people might be interested in playing separate from the Grand Prix. These give you real scenarios where you have to overcome some kind of challenge a driver faced in the past. Like, this one has a new brand of tires showing up that you didn't bother switching to, so now you don't have to pit when everyone else does. The new tires couldn't withstand the heat. If you're really into racing sims, this is the game mode for you. But anyway, that's about all there is for this one. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating F1 World Grand Prix. This ended up being a bit more enjoyable than I expected, but it's still just not the game for me. From looking at other reviews of this game, it seems this game was pretty highly regarded. However, I just cannot get into racing sims myself. I was happy I could experience the game with a bit sillier gameplay than trying to perfectly drive and hyper-memorize every course, you know? It seems if you are into realistic racing games, this is the go-to one on the N64. The graphics are fantastic, and the physics certainly get tough if you play on all the hardest settings. I'd like to imagine most people into a realistic game would prefer something more modern. However, if you're feeling real crazy, the N64 does have a racing wheel controller. I gave it a 4 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 3 out of 10 for difficulty. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. 260 games on the list. 3, 2, 1. Go. 42. That's the one number. What is that? Uh. All right, I guess we're playing Chopper Attack. What the heck? What is that? It's like the most generic game title ever. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.